Now, the Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution has said it will go after MPs who signed committee recommendations rejecting the appointment of Dr. Monica Juma. CIC says it will go to court to have the legislators declared unfit for office for abusing their powers by rejecting Dr. J Monica Juma without any legal basis. But as KTN's senior political reporter Sam Ogina reports, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Justin Muturi, has dismissed this saying no one can control parliament. So this, this section... In addition to the landmark devolution chapter, one of the other issues Kenyans celebrated most at the onset of the 2010 constitution was the requirement that all major public appointees be vetted. There was much fanfare and in public interest when the first big names like the current Chief Justice and other constitutional office holders took the stand in public vetting process. But soon, it became apparent that the whims of parliamentarians were weighing in too heavily. This is the quarrel the CIC now has with the National Assembly over Monica Juma's rejection. We on our part intend uh, to seek legal action, such legal action as may be uh, necessary, to ensure that those who have abused their offices in this manner are dealt with in accordance with the law, including being deemed unsuitable to hold public office. And if indeed the court does make a finding that there was an abuse of power, it is our hope that then we would be seeking to say that those who uh, signed the, the committee recommendation uh, be held accountable for that abuse of power and be declared unfit to, um, to uh, be in public office. Vetting was outlined in the Public Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act of 2011. Article 7 spells out the three issues to be considered by MPs during vetting. This includes the procedure arrived at in choosing the nominee, legal requirements relating to the office, and three, the suitability of the nominee with regard to abilities, experience, and qualities. This third section is where the war over Ambassador Monica Juma's rejection really is. We are talking about our constitution, we are talking about abuse of power by, by uh, 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 parliamentarians, and the whole point of what we would be seeking judicial intervention is to achieve two things. One is so that it is clearly understood yeah, what, what is uh, uh, required uh, constitutionally in that vetting process. And nobody, and the court, can, no court can compel us to make a decision one way or other. Even when they go and say a law is not good, they merely recommend. Almost all those defending the interior principal secretary have dismissed the MP's reasons for rejecting her as flimsy. The legal action that we'll be pursuing in court will be to get the court to declare uh, that indeed the rejection of the nomination on grounds that are not set out in law was an abuse of power. It's a big blow. The big blow to, uh, to I think, um, what I think the president had expected. Because I think she's a very competent officer mm -hmm. in that, in the work. But of course, it may be, may be interpersonal relationship. The interior PS rejection hinged on a letter to parliamentary clerks where the ambassador warned against MPs I'm twisting and asking for favors from her office. Denied these favors, the MPs resolved to teaching Monica Juma a lesson in their vetting exercise. As many as that opinion say, aye. aye. Nonetheless, despite her rejection to the office of the secretary to the cabinet, Ambassador Monica Juma remains PS interior, given her would-be successor retired Major General Gordon Kehalangwa has not been vetted to succeed her.